Okay, YouTube, we're turning it off, so please don't demonetize my video. Thank you so much. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be um, super different than anything you've seen on this channel before. I have an animal YouTube channel as well, if you weren't aware, I will link it in the description box. Over on that channel, I'm subscribed to a channel named Leopard Gecko. She has leopard geckos, and she did a really fun video where she basically fixed people's enclosures, and her whole channel is basically all about leopard geckos, so I was like, okay, this would be really fun to do on my pet channel and also on my beauty channel, but fixing your guys' makeup. I thought it would be really interesting if I asked you to send me pictures of your makeup looks and of your face, different looks that you guys wanted to show me and then I could kind of critique it in a helpful way. I put this on Instagram, so if you are one of the ones that sent something in, thank you. My inbox was so packed, I was just shocked. I was like, seriously, like this many people want me to check out their makeup and critique it? I am not a professionally trained makeup artist. I never went to school for makeup and I'm not always the best at certain things. Like some days my brows look like total horse shit. But if you guys subscribe to my channel and you like what I make, t chances are you might be interested in what I have to say. So, and apparently a lot of you were because my inbox was crazy full. I just wanna put it out there, this video is not meant to roast anybody. I will not be making fun of anybody. These are just going to be my critiques based on what I'm seeing and what I think could potentially make the makeup look your skin, your brows, whatever, look better. And everybody who did send me pictures for this video, I basically said, you are allowing me to put this in a YouTube video if you send me a video, so or a pic pictures. So everyone that did send me the, the images that you will see in this video, they are okay with it, but it is scary still. So be extremely kind in the comments. I don't wanna hear or see any rude ass comments. You will be blocked for good, for life, if you leave anything rude about anybody in this video. This video is meant to help people improve their makeup skills. Imagine you having your picture in this video. Would you wanna read something rude about yourself? If the answer is no, which I know it is, then don't do that to someone else. Usually I have to say that you guys are one of the most positive channels I've ever, ever seen. Sometimes we get a random stranger who pops on here and is a keyboard warrior and is just like, I hate everything. But typically you guys are super, super positive and I noticed that and I really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Let's go ahead and jump right in. But before we do, go ahead and turn on notifications and hit the thumbs up video if you like this video. I got enough emails to do, about, like to create a series out of this, honestly. I would love to see if you guys are enjoying it, if you like it. And if you have any suggestions for me, like something that I could do differently that might be help for you, helpful for you, um, let me know. I guess we're just gonna dive right into this. Let's do it. So first we have Laura P. I'm just gonna use my mouse here to kind of show you what I'm going to be talking about. So this is the first picture that she sent to me. Um, so initially right off the bat, um, I'm, I'm looking at brows. So right here, as you can see, I think these brows should be trimmed a bit. They're quite a bit higher than the rest of the brow. And I would also say that this down here needs to be cleaned up a little bit, especially um, when your eyeshadow is kind of going over that eyebrow hair, it can kind of stand out a little bit. And I'm super guilty of this. I will like let my eyebrow hair grow way too long. So it's not the end of the world. I'm also noticing that she has drawn um, a pretty harsh line right here where it's supposed to look wispy. So the wispies are kind of sticking out over this harsh line, which is making it look way less natural. You've got wispies, so that's good. So I would kind of like how I have done my brows, I have stopped this line over here, like over here, so I can give these little fake hairs a chance to like shine and like kind of do their thing. Okay, so um, aside from that, I would say that the eyeshadow is up uh, a bit too high. Um, I don't think that you should have color that far up into your brow bone. I would stop this pink that you're seeing all the way up in the eyebrows. I would stop that kind of down here where you're seeing this darker purple. Um, and it is hard to do if you have a small space, uh, eyelid space to work with, but just get smaller brushes and work in smaller in smaller sections. Another thing that I'm noticing, I'm noticing two other things that I would probably um, correct in this uh, makeup application. Um, the under eye area right here is looking a little bit dry and just because you're older, I mean, she actually looks younger than me, I'd say, but even though I'm 30, I would consider that like more mature than in your early 20s. You wanna make sure that you're using a concealer that's A, not too thick for your skin, depending on what you're trying to cover up. If you need a lot to cover up, then chances are that you need to color correct under that before you put on the concealer. Also make sure you're not using a concealer that's gonna dry your eyes out um, or under your eyes out because it can tend to look a little bit like a desert and that's kind of what I see going on here. Obviously 
this is a very up close picture. So I wanted to suggest a product uh, for under the eye area if you struggle with any dryness or dark circles under the eyes. Um, it is the Ole Heinrichsen Banana Bright Eye Cream. This can be put under your makeup. It is a solution for fine lines and wrinkles, dark circles and dryness. It is a brightening vitamin C rich cream that targets signs of aging, reducing the look of dark circles while improving concealer application and wear. So it's specifically to wear underneath like concealer and stuff. You know, switch your concealer. There are some very hydrating concealers. I would say some drying concealers are ColourPop's um, concealer. I absolutely love that concealer, but it is slightly drying. I would say that It, it Cosmetics has a really good um, luminous eye cream that go, or not eye cream, uh, concealer for under the eyes. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty hydrating. Again, that's not something I really gravitate towards because I don't have a dry under eye area. So I'm not like super well versed in that, but those are some of the ones that come to mind just right off the cuff. Last thing that I'm noticing that I would change, it looks like, this looks like a eyelash band right here. So it looks like it's not up close to where the lash root actually is. So that could be worked on a little bit, but what I'm seeing is it might just be the flash, but it looks like there's actually um, makeup on these black lashes because they're not looking black to me. So if these are lashes, what I would suggest is doing a coat of mascara over top of those so that they can regain their blackness. And let's go ahead and take a look at the second picture she sent. I think that this is a beautiful look. The lower lashes look really great. I love the sparkle on the inner corner over here. Um, we don't have the eyeshadow up all the way up into the brow uh, or the, the blue eyeshadow uh, all the way up into the brow, which is great. The brows, I would say, could use a little, a little love. Um, this, as you can see, this line up here is kind of slanting upwards and then we have a dip. So I would try and stop this line that's going across here. I would stop that kind of like over here and just like let these little wispies like live their best life and be kind of their own thing. What I like to do, I mean, it depends on personal preference, of course, like eyebrows, but you know, she sent these in for critique, so here we go. I would personally draw some little eyebrow hairs out right here and then kind of lighten this up a little bit and just make sure there's no dip. Um, there's no dip in my eyebrow. You pretty much only have a dip if you're expressive like theater makeup or something, I would say. So it's, it's very slight, it's not that much here, but that is definitely a suggestion I think the eyeshadow looks really great though, and I love the colored hair. It's very monochromatic, very cool. So that is it for Laura P. Let's go ahead and move on, and thank you. I'm not gonna say this every single time, but thank you, Laura P. Uh, is it Laura or Lara? It might be Lara. Thank you guys so much for sending in everything. I'm just gonna put that out there right now so I don't have to say it after each one. So thank you, thank you so much for allowing me to use this in this video. I think this is gonna help a lot of people, and hopefully it helps you too. Okay, so next we have Jennifer H. Um, I received one photo from Jennifer, I think. Some, some of them I didn't save all of them because there was a lot. First off, I think this looks really good. So we're gonna need to take a closer look here. When I take a closer look at Jennifer's makeup, um, I the first thing I'm noticing is brows. I think that's one of the first things that I pretty much notice with everybody, like just no matter what. I get it, brows are hard. I Gosh, you guys have seen some of my pictures that I posted on Instagram from when I was in my early 20s. like. My brows were real bad. So there's hope for everybody. Don't get discouraged, it takes practice. Brows are always going to be like cousins or sisters and not twins. Um, so I think that we could work on this a little bit here with Jennifer, but if you're, if you, if I'm looking at this, this is her right brow right here. Um, I'm seeing a pretty harsh line down here and then it's not present on the other side. So what I like to do with my brows is kind of just remember all the little steps that I do and how I do it. So I would try and mirror the same thing on the other side as much as possible. And then I would take this wing, um, the brow wing just out just a little bit further. If she were to put a pencil from her nostril right here to the edge of her um, eye, that would probably go to right here. And I would say that this tail should be brought down a bit further to where that would that mark would hit. So if you put this pen at the bottom of your nostril there and to the edge of your eye, technically that's where your brow should end. And you should put it kind of in the middle here. And it looks like I didn't actually draw mine out far enough today. Um, but that's what I'm noticing right off the bat. Secondly, um, I would actually pull, as you can see with mine today, I did a smoky eye kind of similar to um, Jennifer's. What I would do is pull that, um, that shadow that you're doing on your lid up a little bit beyond where your crease is so that it doesn't, so that your blending that you're doing there isn't getting lost where it looks like you haven't maybe blended it. And I can see on the left side that it's blended up slightly higher. 
So just try and pay attention to like where you're blending it. But what I do is I take a flat brush. I apply the um, eyeshadow to my eyelid like this and I'll bring it up in the same shape as the other side and just pack it in there. And then I'll take a fluffy brush, a smaller fluffy brush and kind of blur that line. And then I take a transition shade and I will take that over a larger fluffy brush and buff it out. Um, so that was that's what I'd suggest here. Um, I also would put on some light false eyelashes with this look because it's so dark on the top. I wouldn't say it's dark, like it's not as dark as mine, but I find that um, some false lashes are really helpful, especially when you're doing kind of a smoky eye and putting liner in your um, waterline. It's kind of more of a, it's a, it's, it's a heavier makeup look where I think it could use some, um, some false lashes or at least curl your lashes and put a lot of mascara on, I would say. Um, and the other, the only other critique that I really have here, I would say is, um, I would try, oh my gosh, these flies. Have you guys been following me on Twitter? I'm like, I bitch about everything that I hate in life on Twitter. There is like a fly smashed on the window behind the camera that I killed earlier. I don't know. None of the doors are open in my house, but somehow all of these flies keep getting in my house. Anyways, back to this. The only other uh, critique that I would have here is... I think that this lower lash line, as you can see, she's put eyeliner on the lower lash line, but I don't really see that it's blended out or worked into the lower lash line, which I think is really key if you're going to be wearing um, eyeliner on your your waterline at all. Gosh, I'm gonna kill it. Ow. Ow. Oh my gosh, I, Mercury retrograde. Can you guys read that? that's so good anyways so if I can get close enough and you can tell see I've kind of worked my liner into my lash line and then I've taken the darker eyeshadow and kind of smudged that out it looks more finished and I feel like when it when you're doing your eyeliner and you're kind you've kind of applied it like she has here it can sometimes make it look like your makeup's worn off a bit and it's not like quite finished or or it's just worn off over a longer period of time so those are my critiques here. I think the color scheme is really nice. I love that lip shade with the brown. I think it's great. Okay, next we have Vicky M. Um, okay, so clearly there is a Snapchat filter on Vicky M's beautiful face, so it makes it a little more difficult. But um, I would say that Vicky's makeup overall in this photo looks pretty dang good. She looks great. Um, one thing I would point out in this particular picture is, um, is the brows. So uh, it looks like, so where this tear duct ends right here, if you draw straight up, that's where the brow should end. So the brow really should be going all the way to here. Um, also the brows are, the beginning of the brows are shaped a little bit differently here. This one's very rounded, whereas this one is kind of uh, more at a diagonal. So what I would suggest, Vicky, is to um, draw, fill this in a little bit more over here and extend this all the way to where your tear duct ends. Um, this one's pretty pretty much there. I would just draw some hairs in here and fill this in a little bit I also it kind of looks like it's hard to tell with these kind of filters But it kind of looks like this one over here is a little bit thicker um, Just in general and a little bit larger So I would fill this in in the front here and then try and make sure that where the top of this one is This one is as well because it looks like this needs to be filled in a little bit more as well I have issues with my brows too like this one is um, always lower than this one. That's just how my face is. So sometimes you have to try and correct with makeup as much as possible But you know, it's not the end of the world, but that is my suggestion there. Um, now let's go over your second photo Okay, so I'm seeing the same thing here the this one brow over here is a little bit thicker um, And then this one needs to be still pulled in a little bit further um, and then the other thing that I see here right off the bat is that um, your eyeliner on the lower lash line should be worked into your lash line a little bit more. Now, how much you want to do that is totally up to you. Like if you don't want a super, super dark look because you don't want to make your eyes look way down or like you have a black eye, you don't have to go crazy with it. But you could at least grab the eyeshadow that you use at the top and kind of pull that down. But get that, work that pencil into your lash line. It is difficult to get off at the end of the night. I will say you're going to go through a lot of Q-tips. A lot, a lot. Like get your ass to Costco, 
get some Q-tips because you're gonna need them. Um, but work into the lower lash line and then and then um, work some uh, eyeshadow in with that so that you can pull that down a little bit so that it's not just on your waterline. It's always gonna look better if it's just worked into your lash line. That's all. That's all there is to it. But good job. I mean, I think everything else looks pretty dang good. Next we have Amber A. I love the um, eye color choices. If I'm not mistaken, this is my Urban Decay palette. It looks familiar. Oh my gosh, I just got something in my eye. So um, first thing that catches my attention, of course, is brows. Again, I'm gonna reiterate that the way that your brows look is a complete personal choice, but these pictures were submitted to moi. So I'm gonna give my opinion on the brow that I think would look good on your face. So um, the brow shape here is more of like, kind of like a comma kind of a shape. So as you can see right here, uh, the front of the brow is kind of like where it should be and then somehow this got plucked out up here or maybe that's just how it grows naturally. Um, either way, I would continue this line to where the bottom of the, the this hair is and, and, and fill this in right here, all along there. All of that I would fill in. And then this is very hooked. Um, I think that this should kind of gradually go out slightly more as opposed to this kind of shape. Um, but number one, I would fill this in right here. Now, a couple of my favorite brow products right now and that I have on right now that I've been using since I got it in the mail is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. Uh, everything I suggest in this video, I'll link in the description box for you guys and maybe I'll even link even more stuff after doing a little research about like um, dry under eyes, etc. But um, Urban Decay Brow Blade ha has been wonderful. It has one side that is a crayon, kind of like a thin pencil. And then the other side is like an ink stain that's waterproof, all of it's waterproof. So it allows you to fill in areas like this, like I'm talking about on her brows. And then it allows you to also create fine little hair strokes. Um, and I like the neutral Nana shade as well as the dope taupe. I use both of those in conjunction. Um, you have amazing lips. I'm jealous of your lips. They're wonderful. Um, okay. So, uh, another critique that I would say here is, um, I would work on the eyeliner a little bit. I know that eyeliner is very, very hard. Brianna Fox has an amazing video about how to do winged liner because I'm actually not great at it either. Full disclosure. Um, I also, as I've gotten older, this eyelid has hang, hung, hangs down a little bit more. Like I'd like it a little more like that. So it does make it a little more difficult. She has a solution for whether you have hooded eyes or not hooded eyes. And the way that she explains it is so easy to grasp. And again, it like with brows, it takes a lot of practice. See the dark eyeshadow is kind of below the wing and kind of where that wing is, you want your eyeshadow to stop. So this is one of the reasons that I do my eyeshadow first and I do my base after. Because all you gotta do is get a little Q-tip, put some of that, um, uh, Ole Heinrichsen cream on there or a moisturizer or makeup remover, whatever you choose, whatever works and can remove the makeup. I love to use just like a lotion or something. And you can take that and under, once you've done your winged liner, you can take that and draw a really sharp line or draw it first and then put your winged liner on. But you wanna make sure that you don't have eyeshadow below your winged liner. I would also try and steer clear of using meta like super metallics. Like this looks like a very metallic eyeshadow. I would try and avoid using that like in your crease. Um, so maybe what I would have done here personally is taken this black right here and blended that into the crease area and built that up a little more and then up closer to the brow bone once you have buffed out the black, but I would have, I would then put that green shade over top lightly with a very light hand, work it into the black, dip into the black again, and kind of put that over again so that it's not just metallic, like right after your, um, your dark and your crease. So those are my suggestions here. I think um, one thing that's going to drastically improve um, this whole look is filling in the eyebrows a little bit more. Just to recap, I would also, I would, I, I would put a little highlight on with this look as well. Um, you've got the, the brow bone super highlighted. So I would also continue that onto the rest of the face. It looks like there might be a little bit, but it's kind of hard to tell. This fly is like, has a death 
wish. I would um, try using a matte eyeliner as well. I think that they, uh, when you have a metallic eyeshadow plus a shiny black, I think that it can be a little too much at times. And I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head that isn't like shiny. I've heard a lot of great things about the Inglot um, black liner and Brianna Fox uses that in her video. So you can kind of see that firsthand and how it works. Next up we have Brittany H. Um, this is going to be the last one because I didn't realize how long I'd be talking about everybody. Okay, so obviously Brittany has hooded eyelids. Um, and so most of the eyeshadow that she's applied is kind of being covered up. So kind of back to what I was saying in a different critique about kind of pulling that eyeshadow up a little higher, I would do the same thing here. Um, the eyelid space isn't a whole lot, but I would suggest pulling this eyeshadow up at least above this crease line and how you can test this is by looking at a mirror straight ahead not like this not like this but just looking at a mirror straight ahead and looking at your eyelids and bringing that eyeshadow up a bit above your crease and where that kind of skin sets there um, so that people can see the eyeshadow that you've done it'll also help prevent where your eyeshadow like kind of like fades out from like creasing and getting all weird um, so that's my first critique here. I can see that there's a little eyebrow cleanup that could be done, but hey, same, same over here. My eyebrows look like crazy up close. So the second thing that I would say is the brows again, um, kind of where her tear duct stops. If you go up, the brow is kind of almost, <clears throat> um, it's almost like the brow is kind of like non-existent over here. So I'd fill that in a little bit. Um, just like I mentioned on the other one and the other one looks pretty I'm gonna Kill it. I'm gonna <laughs> Did I get it I think I got it <sighs> Okay, let's do this again Alrighty then so uh, I would fill in the brows a little bit Clean them up a little bit. Um, your eyelashes are amazing. Like you have such good eyelashes, I'm shocked. I would suggest some lip liner and a nice lipstick if you, I personally like like real rounded out like upper lip, that's just me though. Um, so I would use a lip liner and I feel like if you have kind of all this makeup going on, you should do something with your lips, even if it's just a gloss or like something. Um, but if you prefer to have a more rounded, fuller upper lip, you can use um, lip liner to help you. <laughs> Out of breath, I'm trying to freaking slay that fly. Whew. Um, I love the highlighter on the tip of the nose. I think that's great. Those would be my suggestions for this photo. Let's move on to a different one. I think this might even be the same. No, we're in a different outfit. Um, uh, same suggestion here with the brows over here. I, I think that I'd like to see this filled in all the way to the tear ducts. It looks like here you have your brows filled in a little bit more, which is great. But again, this one is not coming out far enough. Um, it should come out to about here. I would say this brow should be filled in all the way right here and in. You have such great lashes. Um, for, it looks like you use maybe a liquid lipstick. I would definitely use a lip liner with this. I think that um, it would help with the actual lip line to be a little more crisp. Um, sometimes it's a little difficult to do with liquid liners. So that would be my suggestion there. I think the rest of it looks great. Your skin looks great. I love the glow. So that would be kind of like my only critiques here it would be the lip liner and filling in the brows a little bit more appropriately towards uh, you know, where your tear duct ends. That is the end of this video. I had so much fun doing this. I have so many more pictures of y'all and emails that I hadn't even opened yet that we could put in here. So please let me know by giving this a, th a thumbs up and a comment if you guys really like this concept and I will continue to do it. Let me know if you, like I said 500 times, if you have any suggestions that would make this like more useful to you, please let me know in the comments below. But thank you to everybody who I shared in this video for being brave and sending in your photos and allowing me to critique them online. Um, I'm sure you helped a lot of other people and hopefully it was useful for you too But I'm stoked to try this again if you guys like it I think that it, it's a rad little series that we could do. I have so many more to look through So hopefully I can kind of curate a list of you know Problems problems that a lot of people are having and kind of like address those in these videos, but thank you guys for watching I appreciate you and your time and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys